In this problem, they want to know if we have these perfectly spherical ice cream cone scoops, right? Scoops of ice cream. Maybe this is pistachio. With a radius of one, how many of them can fit into this cone right here? How many can we scrunch into there? So let's just start thinking about this. We, we have this scoop of ice cream. It has a radius of one. So r equals one. But I'm going to actually focus on the height of the sphere, because if the radius is 1, then the diameter is double that. So the height of the sphere is 2, and so is the width, right? Just like on this cone, where the radius is 1, so the width will be 2. And let me just try to scale this scoop a little bit better here. Um, so we have pistachio ice cream. And it should fit the radius of that cone a little bit better. So again, this, this sphere right here, we're just saying that it has a radius of 1. So its height must be 2, because the height is the diameter of a sphere, and it's double the radius. So here we can say that the d equals 2, or I'll say height. The height is 2 inches of each scoop of ice cream. So intuitively, you can see that when you pack in the, in the scoops, you can definitely get more than one scoop in there. Right? We have a cone with a height of 5. The question is exactly how many can we fit? And this is really a question of division, right? Because let's say you have a, a little floor model. This is your floor right here, and you're trying to tile it. Well, if you're trying to tile the floor, and you know that one tile takes up, let's say, half the space, of course you can see that a second tile will take up the entire floor. But really, what you can think about is to divide the area of the floor by one of the tiles, right? So let's say the area of the whole floor is... 2 by 1, right? 2 feet by 1 feet. And the area of the tile, right, what would it be then? It would be 1 by 1, right? 1 by 1. That's this tile right here. So really, if the area of the floor is 2 times 1 or 2, and the, the area of the tile is 1 by 1 or 1, you could divide 2 by 1. And it tells you that 2 tiles fit on this floor. The goal is that here to realize that that division is a one tool you can use to solve this problem. Essentially, we're going to divide the volume of the cone, right, by the volume of the sphere. Because that will tell us, okay, how many spheres will fit into the cone. Because all we're looking at is the volume, not so much the actual physical space, right, even though volume is space, but really, we, we can condense that, that volume down into this cone, and, and that takes this into account, because we're dividing the sphere into the cone. So I'm going to leave this fraction over here to remember that we're taking the volume of the cone divided by the volume of the sphere. So how do we find a volume of a cone? Well, the cone is, is just, well, this is a great observation to make. If you draw a cylinder, and you draw it so that the cylinder has the same height as the cone and the same radius, What's really nice about this is that the, the cone takes up exactly one-third of the cylinder. So the volume of a cone, right, is just equal to one-third pi r squared h. Because it's, that's one-third, and this part of the equation is just the volume of a cylinder. So the volume of a cone is the volume of a cylinder with the same height. So here that would end up equaling one-third times pi r squared if you look up here, this one inch highlights this white line, and that's the radius. So one squared is, is just one, but we'll write it out. And then times the height. The height's five inches. If we simplify this and rearrange, we get the volume of the cone equals one third times one times five times pi. Right? One squared is one. Five times a third is five thirds. I'm just multiplying. And I'm going to leave pi there because I know that by, by estimating with pi, this will get really messy. But if I leave pi there, it, it might cancel out nicely, especially with the sphere right here. So the volume of a sphere is also has a nice relationship to a cylinder. If I was to draw a cylinder around this sphere with the same height, right, so a height of 2, right, we said that earlier, and the same radius, the radius of 1, this sphere will fit into that cylinder exactly two-thirds of the time. So the sphere is two-thirds pi r squared h instead of one-third. So now what, what's going to happen here, your radius is one. 
and your height is two, so you, it's a different height from before, right? Don't think these are the same heights. So we have two thirds times pi radius squared, that's one squared, times the height of two. If we simplify this, we get the volume of a sphere, right? equals, well, 1 squared is 1, and 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds pi. So now we have our two volumes. So we have the volume of a cone, right, we'll keep this in color here, 5 thirds pi, divided by the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi. Well, if we're dividing some number times pi, divided by some number times pi, Eventually, we're going to divide pi by pi. So anything divided by itself is just 1. So the pi's cancel out. And now we just have 5 thirds divided by 4 thirds. And with division by fractions, I usually flip my, my second number and multiply. So we get 5 thirds times, excuse me, right, 4 thirds. Oh, 3 fourths, oh boy. Right, all I'm doing there is multiplying instead of dividing and taking the reciprocal or flipping the second number. And this is wonderful here because the threes cancel out, right? Three divided by three is one, and we get five fourths. So what does that mean? Well, that means, let's say we stick with pistachio here. Um, if a height of two inches is about here, right? And so that means about one, if you think about what five fourths is, it's one and then a fourth. So then we have about a fourth of a scoop. And now this looks like there's a lot of empty space. But remember, these spheres have to be crunched inside the cone, right? That's, that's how I eat my ice cream. I crush down the, the scoops. So it's interesting to me that the, these two scoops here, when you crunch them down, they will fill this entire cone. So one and a fourth of these scoops will fit right in there. And, and division was the way I solved it. Although, please let me know if you have another more intuitive way of solving this, because there's this potential, I feel like, for a much simpler solution, especially since the cone is a third of a cylinder and the sphere is two-thirds of a cylinder. Something about that tells me that there must be an easy way to solve this. All right, thanks.